By the end of this video, you will understand exactly how to use the if and the switch node to build smarter and more flexible workflows in NNN. So let's jump right in. Before I will show you how the if and the switch node work, I will first explain to you why you even need to use these nodes. The reason why I want to use these nodes is for flow control and for conditional routing. And this is an essential part when you are building dynamic workflows. First, I'm going to explain to you what the if node is and how you can use it. The if node is a binary decision maker, and this means that a value will be true or the value will be false after you have passed it through the if node. So this is how the if node works. Data will be coming into this node, then it will check if a certain condition is true or if a certain condition is false. When it is true, it will go to the top path, and when it is false, it will go to the bottom path. So let's say we have the following situation. Your incoming data is the amount of stock that you have left in your warehouse. And the if node will check if the stock is greater or equal than 50. So the incoming data, let's say the value is 49, then it will check if it's equal or greater than 50. In this case, it is false, and then it will go to the false path. If the incoming data is, let's say, 60, then it is greater than 50, and then it will be true, and then it will go to the top path. Now that you know what the if node can do, I will now show you what all the settings are so that you can set up your if node correctly. Before I'm going to show you all of the settings in the if node, I've added some dummy data here. And with this dummy data, we can get a better understanding of when we need to use certain settings into our if node. When you open your if node, you will see this right here. And here we have our conditions, and this is the input value, and that needs to be equal to another value. So the way that this condition works is the following. In this case, I'm going to say the name as the input variable, and then that needs to be equal to, and then we're going to say John Doe. So right now we're going to say John Doe is equal to John Doe, and this is true. So when we execute this, we get true. And if we look in the output, we can see one item in the true branch and zero items in the false branch. But if I say John Doe is equal to Mike Jones, then right now it will be false because that is not true. And here we can see that our result is in the false branch. And this is how the most simple form of the if node will work. And right now we have chosen for the is equal to condition, but there are a lot more conditions and data types. The data type that we have used now is a string data type, and that is because we have a text here. You can also see it here, there's an A, and that means that is a string. But there are a lot more data types because you have a string data type, you have a number data type, date and time, the boolean, the array, and the object. And for each of these different data types, we can choose for a different condition. So here we have all of the different conditions. So these are all of the different conditions where we can choose from for all of these different data types. Let's say exist, then if this exists, so if this has a value, then it will go to the true branch. So right now I can say execute step and then it will go to the true branch. But when this value is empty, then it does not exist and then it will go to the false branch. So it is very important to know when you need to use which condition. Right now we have only used one condition in our if node, but you can actually use multiple conditions in the same if node. So you just click here on add condition and then you will see that you will have another condition which the if node will check. And here we have one new thing and this is the AND and OR operation. So what this will do is the AND stands for that one condition needs to be true and the other condition also needs to be true before it can go to the through branch. If I select the OR, then only one of the two needs to be true before it can go to the true branch. So if the top one is false and the bottom one is true, then it will go to the true branch. If both are false, then it will go to the false branch. And if both are true, then it will also go to the true branch. So the AND is a more strict operation and the OR is a bit more forgiving because only one of the two needs to be true. Before we move on to the switch node, I will give you one final demonstration of how this will work. So here I'm going to pick the age and then I'm going to say a number because this is a number and then I'm going to say it is greater than 50. And this expression should be false because the number is 46 and this is not greater than 50. The top John Doe exists, so this should be true. And because I have used the AND operator, when I run this node, it will be false. And as you can see, the result was false because only one of these conditions was true. When I put this AND on OR, so only one of the expressions needs to be true. And now you can see it goes to the true branch because the top condition is true while the bottom condition is false. And this is all that you need to know about the IF node. So let's move on to the switch node. And now we have arrived at the switch node. And the reason why you would want to use the switch node is if you need multi-conditional routing. And what this means is, let's say you need to choose a certain route based upon a certain priority or a certain category, then you often need more than two branches like you have with the if node. 
With the switch node, it is possible to make a new route for each of the different categories or for all of the different priority levels. And this is not possible with the if node because there you only have true and false. So here you can see I currently have three different routes set up. But if I go in the switch node and then add a route, then you can see that I now have currently four different routes and you can add as many routes as you would need for your workflow. So this is how the switch node works. You have some incoming high priority data, then the switch node will check to which route this data needs to go. And because you already have set up a high priority route, it will send the high priority data to that route and then it will go to the rest of the workflow. Just as with the if node, I will be using this data to make the explanation of the if node a lot easier. So I will now be running this node. And now we can go into our switch node. When we open the switch node, we will see this right here. And here we have all of our different routings. If we want to add multiple routings, we can click here on add routing rule. And then you can see that we will add a routing. So before I'm gonna show you how you can correctly set this switch node up, I'm first gonna to explain to you how the routing rules work. So here we have our input value that is from here. Then we have our condition that is equal to in this case. And then here we have our second value. So let's say I'm going to choose the age. Then I'm going to say this is a number. So I need to change it to a number. And then I'm going to say is less than. Now I'm going to say is less than 30. So if the age is less than 30, then this will be true. With the switch node, it is very important that only one condition can be true at a time. So when this one is true, all the other two need to be false. If the middle is true, then the other two need to be false. And this is very important to let your switch node work correctly. For the second one, I'm also gonna add the age, and then I'm gonna say a number is less than, and then I'm gonna type 40. And finally, for the third one, the age again, the number less than 50. And in this case, our number is 46. So this one will be false. The second one will also be false. And the third one will be true. So when I now run this switch, then the route will go to the third path. So as you can see, output zero is empty, output one is empty, and output two has our data. And if we exit this node, we can also see it visually. So here you can see the top two are empty and the third one has one item. Currently, each route does not have a name, but only a number. So zero, one, two. And because of this, we do not know when certain data goes to a certain route. But the nice thing is, is that we can actually change these numbers for a name so we can easily see what data goes to what route. And the way that you can do this is that you need to toggle this switch rename output. So right now the output name is empty, but here I can say age below 30. For the second one, I'm gonna name it age below 40. And for the last one, so now we have named each route so we know what data goes to what route. And now that I have executed again, you can see age below 30 for the top route, the middle route age below 40, and the bottom route age below 50. And the last important thing that I wanted to mention for the switch node is in the routing rules and then specifically about the condition. So just as with the if node, for the condition you need to choose for the correct data type, so the string, number, date and time, boolean, array or an object. And you also can choose the correct expression that you want to match on. And to be able to use the switch node correctly, it is very important that you know when you need to choose certain conditions. So when you choose the correct condition, your result will be way better and you will make it way easier for yourself when setting up the switch node. Well, this is all that you need to know about the if and the switch node to build smarter and more flexible workflows within NNN. I will also leave the test workflow for the if and the switch node in the description so you can follow along or play around with it for yourself. And this is all that I have for you today. If you found this video useful, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe and I will see you in the next video.